we're looking at 21st century competencies for making the transition to a low carbon society and a collaborative economy. So my name is, uh, as I said, Davey. I live and work in uh, Club Jordan Eco Village. So I really get to um, have an opportunity and a privilege to walk my talk. And I do my work through a cooperative called Sustainable Ireland. And we we we're, we're, uh, do our work uh, under the banner of Cultivate Living and Learning, mostly designing learning pathways and hosting and delivering training. And I'll introduce Anna, my colleague here. Or Anna, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, David. Uh, my name is Anna Huertas, and uh, I am from Spain, but I'm currently studying a master's in Sustainable Agriculture in France. And uh, Daisy asked me to participate in this seminar because this webinar, sorry, because I am an example of a young person from a non-Anglican country who has stepped up and uh, really worked into different projects that are working towards serving these ways of change that we're going to tell you more about now. So thank you, Davy, and thank you for the, for the idea um, um, organization for, for this webinar too. Working with Anna over the last two years in a European learning partnership uh, focused on building the capacities of permaculture teachers. So let's start with a quote um, from Buckminster Fuller. Um, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, we need to build a new model to make the existing model obsolete. So let's just use that as a frame and a way into what we were talking about. I asked uh, if people could watch stuff in the way to change. If you're watching this webinar uh, and haven't watched that, it'd be interesting to have a look at that after. It's on YouTube, Surfing the Ways of Change. It's a document, it's a short film that just explores the concept of community resilience through the metaphor of surfing and that we need the attributes of a good wave rider to actually face the challenges that we face. So resilience is what we want to talk about. Now, from a sustainability advocate, I've been for maybe almost 20 years. For the last six years, we've really reframed the sustainability agenda in the idea of resilience. And here's a quote from Andrew Zoli, who wrote Resilience, Why Things Bounce Back. He says, where sustainability aims to put the world back into balance, resilience looks for ways to manage in an imbalanced world. So let's bear that in mind as we look at what resilience really means. Community resilience, then, is the development and engagement of community resources and assets to really thrive in a dynamic environment that more and more will be characterized by change, uncertainty, unpredictability, and surprise. This is the context that we live in now. We won't have secure, pensionable jobs and work 9 to 5. We don't have that certainty. Change, uncertainty, unpredictability and surprise is the context that we will be operating in and creating businesses in, building communities in. And the idea of bounce back ability when we talk about community resilience doesn't really work. We need to take the opportunity of these crises to break through or to bounce forward to new ways of doing things. So really, when we talk about resilience from a community point of view, we're talking about our capacity to cope with stress to overcome adversity and adapt to change positively and creatively. Adaptation. This will be the big uh, word and the phrase that we, uh, as we move into an uncertain future, we need to relearn the competencies to adapt, to be flexible. And that's why I like the metaphor of suffering. So what do we need for a resilient community? We need to have an inclusive, creative local culture that shapes a positive, welcoming sense of place being rooted in a place, being geographically um, connected, and um, knowing our neighbors is so important. We need a localizing economy that sustains our food, our energy, our water, our housing, and other resources. We don't mean that through localization and building resilience, that we turn our back on the rest of the world, that we need to be in solidarity with other communities, both in our regions and our nations and internationally. So we really need strong links to other places and communities, and be able to share the experience and the learning of developing new businesses, of innovating new community processes. So this is at the heart of the Transition Towns movement, the Eco-Village movement, the permaculture movement, which we'll um, introduce in a second. So community resilience, a new frame, a new frame to look at the issues of sustainability, and rather than saying that everything needs to change, we are saying we need to have the capacity or the competencies 
to navigate change, to manage change, to cope with change, to shape change, to build community and collaborate. We need to make social networks real geographically. We need to get to know our neighbours. We need to develop a stronger sense of place. And we need to focus on building relationships and trust. And we need to consider cooperative approaches to doing business uh, and creating value in our community. And here, uh, a good example, and I'm going to mention it in a second, is the transition process. Start and join a transition in this initiative. So I just want to introduce quickly this idea of the collaborative economy. It's sort of a new term that's emerging with lots of names for it, the sharing economy, collaborative consumption, and the commons, uh, a sort of reimagining of the commons, um, inspired by the open source movement. So we have protocols to collaborate, to create um, in open source. We've managed across the world as communities to build common knowledge or shared software together. Could we do the same for hardware? for actual physical things? Could we learn from this to steward our land and our resources as communities better? So there's a new uh, emerging movement built on a very old idea of the commons that has the potential to increase social capital, increase social connections, and therefore strengthen the resilience of our community. Well, I would like to share a bit my experience of stepping up to become more involved in this wave of change that's been coming our way for a couple of years now. So I was doing my university education in England and I realized that I didn't like the way things were working in the world and therefore took up um, development studies and I became an aid worker because I thought development wasn't being done correctly and I would I wanted to see how I could help change that. And I was in Bolivia, I had been working there for six months when I realized that clearly development it it wasn't the answer. There was an element missing which was strengthening communities really so they could become the ones in charge of their own development. So they could shape it in their own way, according to their own needs and their own vision. First of all, transition initiatives. I am the president of the Spanish National Organization for Transition uh, in Spain. And the things that transition initiatives work on are basically related to creating creative community-based solutions the current challenges that we're facing. And as many of you know, uh, Spain's case is particularly complex and challenging at the moment. But it's amazing to see how the over 40 or, or at this time maybe 50 initiatives all around the country are coming up with the most amazing ideas to challenge the challenge and actually get some new ways of living and building community and in the end earning earning a livelihood. Finally the second um, example of the project I'm involved in um, is Ecolis, which uh David will soon join hopefully with uh, this cultivate organization. And it is an European network of for community led initiatives on climate change and sustainability. So this is an organization that wants to act as an umbrella organization, bringing many different organizations such as transition initiatives, eco villages, permaculture associations, research centers, universities, and so on. There are so many I've lost count. The idea is to bring them all together with because we all have this common goal, which is strengthening communities and adapting, becoming more resilient, as we were explaining earlier, for these challenges that we're facing. There will be eventually, I hope, uh, a, a discussion on how to involve more young people, but that will come um, soon enough. And it is incredible to see how much power comes when people who are interested in the same thing come together to discuss how can we make our dream happen? And at the moment, Ecolis 
is touching upon many different aspects. And one that is particularly interesting is that they're trying to influence policy decisions uh, at the level of the United Nations, for example. So from my perspective and my counsel would be it's possible. It just need to take one step forward and the people are there. You don't have to start from zero. So much work has been done with until now. What about the political, the political system, or even worse, the global political system that does not support a fair world? Should we lobby stronger or just act by fighting it? I mean, act fairly as far as we can. And um, my response was to go back to the first slide of your presentation, uh, to that quote that you put there from Black Mr. Queen, who there, David. Yeah. And I'm just going to repeat it because I think it's the key uh, for this question and many others. You, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. You change something with a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So yes, the political system, globally, locally, at community level, is often a very big obstacle for many of the things we want to do. So what we should do is just create a new model that works better for us. We need to, uh, we need to resist some of the things that are going on in the world. That's very important work. But we need to see ourselves as proactivists, not just activists stopping these things. So we need to uh, see our work as generating the new system that will allow us to uh, thrive and prosper as uh, the system that we are so, so dependent on starts to crumble and, um, and die. Uh, new systems and new approaches are being birthed. We need to connect them and nourish them and see that um, that system is not in uh, conflict or in opposition to uh, the existing system, but something that complements and holds uh, and allows us to flourish um, in these uncertainties. Mm -hmm.